Hello everybody, Torx here. Going to be doing a case review on the Aza Toledo 301. It is a mid-ATX case. Um, it's roughly $70 or so. That's including shipping on Newegg or wherever you find it. So it, I would consider it a budget case. It's a sub-$100 case. Um, yeah, it's one of the best out there, I think. Um, I remember when I was looking for this thing a couple years ago. I was looking for a case that fit everything in my criteria and after narrowing down so many other cases this and maybe like one other case for the two that it came down to to close the window but yeah so anyway let's get on with the review there's a lot of really awesome things about this case first off it's made of steel whoops sorry it's made of steel and plastic so this portion right here and this front piece are plastic but Everything else is steel, so it's incredibly sturdy. It feels high quality. Not that that really means anything, but it does. It's not a flimsy aluminum case. It feels like high quality. And for 70 bucks, it it feels like a $100 case or something. So, um, But anyway, yeah, mid-ATX, your buttons are on the top here. Can you see that? No, you can't. Let me bring it down there. Power button, reset button. There's your HDD LED right there, which is a yellowish-orange color. Around the power button, there's a blue LED around that rim, your USB 2.0, and your two audio ports. Um, yeah, so that's, those are the panels right there. Now, it has a really cool design. I think there's a front blue LED right here. That's pretty cool. Um, and then you got this design right here, these jagged sort of armadillo, that's what I call them, looking things. I think they're really cool. And on the back, it's like a shell almost. So they're vent, they're ventilated as well. So that's pretty awesome. It's really cool looking, but it's also extremely functional. So I'm gonna open it up. There's nothing really in there right now. Oh, that's not true. There's the C drive and some hard drives in there. There's no motherboard or graphics card, RAM, power supply. None of that's in there right now because I'm upgrading and that stuff's all out of the case right now. So I thought it would be a perfect time to do a re review. So your side panel is steel, obviously, like everything else. And you have two fan ports here, actually three technically. You can have a 140 millimeter or a 120 millimeter fan, and then another one down there. So two fans, or these four holes right here can be a 250 millimeter fan, which the case comes with. It comes with like a, a bluish green colored fan, but I don't have that right now. So whatever you prefer. So three different fan sizes on that thing. Now, how many fans can you have in here is one of the biggest things I think is great about this case. You can have quite a few, more than what else you can get. One bottom fan, one rear fan, two roof fans, one front fan, and then of course up to the two fans on the side panel. So that's seven case fans you can have. I believe it comes with a rear fan, and if I'm not mistaken, it also comes with a front fan. So you get a front, rear, and a side, the 250 millimeter side panel fan. But I've completely loaded up every single fan. Not right now, I'm replacing fans. I'm doing a lot of stuff with this case, but again, I'm just doing the review right now. But I do have all the fans to put in there. So on the rear, you can put a 250 millimeter fan back there. Um, on the front, if I can bring you up there, there's one fan out there now, but you can put another one there. You can put two 120 millimeter fans right there as well. 120 millimeter fan on the bottom here. I think you can also put down a 92 or 80 millimeter, I believe. Um, and in the front, a 120 millimeter. I'm not sure if you can also put an 80 or 92 millimeter. Let's just say a 120 for now. Um, so yeah, quite a few fans in there. Excellent cooling. There's a lot of room in this case, like there are for pretty much most mid or just regular ATX cases, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, excellent cooling. That's one of the biggest upsides to this case. You have really, really good cooling. Um, and yeah, again, I like this roof right here. The, the air shoots out of these. So if you have LED fans, the LEDs kind of shoot out the back and it creates sort of like a pattern on the wall or whatever, the wall of your room. So that's pretty cool, I think. Um, just in case you're wondering, sorry, you have water cooling spouts right here. I'll never use them, I don't think, but they're there. You have seven PCI slots. Standard stuff, bottom mounted power supply in case you didn't notice already. Um, it takes regular ATX micro ATX and full ATX motherboards, I believe. So you can fill this whole thing up pretty much with a motherboard. Um, the risers are built in. It does not come with uh, you know those little screw risers that you screw in yourself. 
They're built in risers. They've worked fine for the multiple motherboards I put in this thing. I think two motherboards I put through this thing, and they both work just fine. So built in risers. Some people don't like that. I think that's perfectly fine. It fits. It's a very universal thing. So um, let's talk about the drive bays here. You get four 5.25 inch bays. So, you know, optical drive like the CD drive. I have a storage box right here. I did a review on that. And you can put two, I think these are called the 2.5 inch, or maybe 3.5 inch they're called, internal 3.5 inch bays. And then, no sorry, this one's the external 3.5 inch, that's the internal 3.5 inch. And then four 3.5 inch you know, hard drive bays. So you can go up to, well if I wanted to count how many, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If I wanted to fill all these up with hard drives, you know, using converters and stuff. You can have 10 hard drives in there, not that that really matters, so I don't think anybody needs that many, but four dedicated hard drive bays, and then of course you put a solid state drive in this internal bay right here, um, but you can also use one of these things, I'll talk about these in a second, um, but yeah, this tool is out here, I'm not really a huge fan of this, but it gets the job done, it's like a little door, you have a little hinge there, and you can screw in your, you know, devices, and there's these pegs on here, and basically they just fit into the holes of the devices, and then you slide these plastic thingies, we'll call them, so little doors there. And if you're not using the screws, these will wobble a little bit, but I am using the screws just to keep them in place. Personally, I'm not really a fan of this thing. I've seen better toolless designs out there, but teach their own. It still works just fine, I think. Um, but yeah, these toolless designs are very, very nice. I really, really like them. I'm going to get a regular hard drive out. Basically, they, you have these black clips right here, okay? And you just snap them on to the hard drives. You just snap them. There's just little pegs up into the holes. And then you pinch them to fit it in, and then they click into place. There you go. And they wobble around a little bit. Not that that's really a big deal. It keeps it secure enough. It doesn't wobble the hard drive around alone. So, um, one thing I don't like about these, though, is that these are actually meant to be facing this way. I mean, the clips would be facing right here, but... The hard drives are meant to be turned around. They're not meant to be put in this way. I'm kind of forcing it. See, in these two spots right here, these pegs are not going into any holes of the hard drive. They're just sort of sticking out. Not you can't really see that, but I can. Um, but I just turned around because I think it's a more neat design. It it's not as secure. I think it's not really a big deal, but I don't want the wires all right here because there's way too much clutter and it's really really annoying, especially if you have multiple hard drives like I do right here. They're all full right here. All four of the hard drives are in there. So I have them in the back and to the cable management, which I'll show you in a second, that's where I plug them in. But I think it's a really, really cool design if you do this. It's much neater. It's pretty awesome. And then of course, you know, it's a ventilated cage right here. It holds everywhere. So the fan in the front here can bring in air to cool them down a little bit. Um, and one of these clip-on things that it comes with has a converter attached to it. It's screwed on there. You can unscrew it and take it off if you want it. I have a solid state drive installed in it right now, but if you didn't want that, you just want another 3.5 inch hard drive, so be it. You just take this out if you needed all four of them for whatever reason, and then you can use this bay right here, the 2.5 inch bay, to put this solid state drive in. So you have a dedicated solid state drive, and also another dedicated solid state drive on one of these clip-on things. So put it right there. So yeah, quite a few. And then I'm using this external one right here for the little card reader. You can see it poking out right there. I think it looks really, really cool. These 3.5 inch um, external bays are kind of going out of style a little bit. You don't see them in many new cases. But, um, yeah. The case also comes with these ventilated, uh, I don't want to call them trays. I don't know what you call them. Just plates, I guess. So you can actually see through these and it does bring in air. Like, so if you had an outtake fan right here, it does actually, all the air moving does actually bring through through all the vents, just like any computer. So think of them as vents, basically, if you're not using them. And they're, it's really clean looking, it's really cool looking. And also there's a little 3.5 inch one that goes on this spot, but I'm using it right now, so it's not there. But they, they just punch right out and you just clip them back in, so they're pretty cool. Um, actually, I think I'm going to do that right now. Nah, I'm not going to do it right now, who cares. Uh, but just take my word for it. They work well. What else can I really say about it? I covered all the bays, all the fans you get. There's a lot of good things about this case. Again, bottom mount power supply. There's no dust um, filter or anything like that, unfortunately, but not that big of a deal. One thing to keep in mind, if you have a really, really big power supply, it may get in the way of this bottom 120 millimeter fan if you installed one there. So 
I would recommend you use an 80 or 92 millimeter fan on the bottom there if you're going to put in a power supply that's huge because my power supply I did use was a little bit big. It just barely fit right here, but it would not allow the fan to screw in. I've used rubber mounts, so the fan kind of wobbles just a little bit if you move it, but it's flexible enough so you can fit in a big power supply in there. So maybe use rubber mounts, but huger power supplies will not. Yeah, it takes. Just use an 80 millimeter or 92 millimeter fan down there if you're having a big fan. But finally, I think the last thing we talk about this case, one of the really awesome benefits of this case in comparison to others out there is the amazing cable management. It's one of the best I've ever seen for this price and this size of case. Of course, you have these little Phillips head screws that you can finger screw out, which is nice. Revealing the back slide panel plate. I'll just take a quick look at that. Um, and you can see there's an indent in here. It pokes out like this on the side, but the indentation here allows more room for cables. So that's good. But not only that, it already has quite a bit of room for cables. I know it's a mess right now, um, but I just kind of crammed everything in place just for the review pretty much. I'm going to start uh, neatening it out once I get a new motherboard, new power supply, new stuff in there. But for now, let's look at it for what it's worth. Um, I have one IDE hard drive down here. Actually, I'm probably going to have to get rid of it because I don't think my new motherboard even has an IDE port in it. But you can see I have some of the hard drives plugged in right now through the back right there. That's what I was talking about when you flip the hard drives around. I think it's much more neat. So now all the cables are in the way in the front. I think that's pretty cool. Um, but you have quite a lot of room here. Down here, this whole, I think it's really cool. It's crisply cut. Power supply cables naturally go through there. And you can put them through this hole up here, or you can ride them up, up to here. Um, and then, of course, plug them into the hard drives and such. Again, I really recommend you flip the hard drives around if you ever get this case. Then you can go through here. Yeah, and you don't have to crowd them around a specific area. Um, what I used to do when these hard drive bays weren't full, I used to just, cr the ones I wasn't using, I would just put down here, but there's no room for that anymore. So I have to just kind of sit them around, spread them out. But with this tray right here, not try the indentation in the side panel, you pretty much can afford to put a bunch of cables, even really fat power supply cables. It has a very good time taking care of all of it. So. Cable management is not a problem with this case. First of all, it has cable management, and second off, it has really, 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 really good cable management, so keep that in mind. You have quite a bit of room here, and then of course, even the side panel pokes out. I like the cable management up here for the fans on the top. There's basically a little slit right here. Let me try to bring you in. If you can see that, there's basically just a little hole up there that's where the fans up here and the panel wires like the power button and the hard drive LED, all that stuff, all comes out this uh, hole right here. And even this hole right here if you wanted to. So it's really, really neat. And then you can, you know, put it through the holes here and then into the motherboard. So cable management is an A plus in my book. It's some of the best cable management I've ever seen for this price anyway. I know there's probably better stuff out there for like the full ATX, but this is mid ATX case, keep that in mind. Um, what could I, what bad things could I really say about this case? Um, Nothing really, let me just get this back on. It's not one of those side panels that you slide out and take out, that's usually more standard. You just kind of pinch it in like that. And then it closes, and then you pretty much need the screws to keep it shut, but not a big deal. So as I screw this in, what else could I say about this case? Um, nothing really, it has excellent cooling. It's very, very sturdy, especially because it's made of steel. It's cool looking, you know, it's a blackened case. Um, I like the designs on the top here, like these, these jagged sort of lines and stuff it has. And you have quite a bit of room for like, you know, hard drives and such. It's not the most out there. Um, some, some of these cases have literally just a whole line for like hard drives, basically. This has four. And then, of course, you could use this 3.5 inch bay right here for, a hard, for another 3.5 inch hardware drive to kind of stick out. Some people do that, and then of course you can use converters, but how many hard drives do you really need, honestly? I have four for a couple of weird reasons. Uh, solid state drives where the OS is on, obviously. Then I got a new terabyte hard drive because a 750 gigabyte hard drive I had from years ago from a pre-made desktop I bought a long, long time ago. What is now completely full of a bunch of crap. And then I got a 160 gigabyte IDE hard drive, which I pulled from a really, really old computer and nobody needed it anymore, so I just took the hard drive and stuck it in here. And I use that for like backup files and such, but eh, 
probably won't even be able to use it anymore because my new motherboard does not have an IDE cable. So, but just to let you know, that's why I have all the hard drives there. But it's yeah, it's it's got it's very decent amount of bays, excellent cooling, very very sturdy, excellent cable management. There's not a whole lot of bad things I can really say about this case. There's nothing that really really annoys me. It's all really really good. I think so. That's that. It's cool looking and very functional at the same time, both aesthetically and functionally. It's a very good case. And for an outstanding price, seven bucks, no problems with it. And then these pegs, of course, are like you know, just, just plastic pegs. They're not the really rubbery kind that sticks still. Unfortunately, they might slide out a little bit, but you have quite a bit of room down here. I like the ones that kind of are risen up a lot, but it's a little bit closer to the ground. Not that big of a deal, though. Um, but yeah, that's all I can say about that. So, excellent case.